Hi, this is Jason Green. This video is one in a series of videos discussing stock valuation. In these videos, we're discussing both the theoretical models of valuation and the practical application. This video focuses on the dividend discount model. We'll discuss the constant dividend version, the constant growth version, as well as the more flexible multi-stage dividend discount model. Let's get started. The purpose of any valuation model is to determine the intrinsic value of a firm or its stock. In doing so, we can decide whether the stock is overvalued or undervalued at its current market price. We can also use these models to use the market price to infer the market's assessment of the stock's growth prospects. The approach of the dividend discount model and other theoretical models is actually conceptually quite simple. We want to calculate the present value of future cash flows. For the dividend discount model, this will be the stock's dividends. We'll do so by applying the appropriate discount rate and forecasting how these cash flows are going to grow over time. As we get into this theoretical model, it's important to always start from first principles. The value of any asset is the present value of the asset's future cash flows. Valuation is just this simple. Of course, it's quite complex too, because we're trying to determine today's value based on something that's going to happen in the future. And we simply don't know what the future cash flows will be. So we must somehow forecast those. So let's get started by assuming that we want to buy a stock today and think about what future cash flows we would expect from this stock. Of course, while we hold the stock, we'll earn dividends, and when we sell the stock, we'll get the selling price. Let's simplify it a little further. Suppose we hold a stock for one year. The value of the stock today is the present value of the dividend that we receive in one year at time one, plus the present value of the stock price that we receive when we sell the stock in one year at time one. Let's look at that on a timeline. Let the value of the stock be denoted by V sub t. Let the dividend be denoted by D sub t, the dividend at time t. And K is going to represent our discount rate. In another video, we'll discuss how that discount rate is calculated. So you see on the timeline D1 and V1 that occur one year from now. To get today's value, V0, we simply take the present value of the dividend received in one year and add to that the present value of the selling price, V1, that we receive in one year. So again, it's just that simple. Of course, the question comes up, how do we know what the value of the stock is in one year? The way we're going to answer that question, rather than trying to forecast the value of that stock, is just say, well, what would the time one buyer be willing to pay? And if we think it's reasonable to value the stock the way we just did, perhaps the time one buyer will feel the same way. So suppose the time one buyer calculates the price in exactly the same manner. That is, they calculate the present value of the dividend the next year, plus their selling price that they would receive the next year. So we'll show that on the timeline here. The time one buyer, which is going to, who is going to pay V1, will be getting the present value of D2 plus the present value of V2. So we'll just make that substitution. Once we've made that substitution, you can see that the algebra works out so that the present value today is V0 is equal to the present value of the dividend to be received at time 1, plus the present value of the dividend to be received at time 2, plus the present value of what will eventually be the selling price at time 2. So in some ways we've made our chore a little easier here, but we've also made it just as complex. Instead of forecasting the value of the stock at time 1, now we must forecast the value of the stock at time two. But of course, we can keep making the same assumption here, that the person that buys the stock at time two is willing to pay the same thing in terms of how they model the value of that stock. So we'll make another substitution. The value of the stock at time two will simply be the present value of the dividend at time three plus the present value of the selling price at time three. Substituting that in, we see that the value at time three shows up. So we'll have to make another substitution. Assume the person buying the stock at time three is paying the present value of the dividend at time four plus the present value of the selling price at time four, and so on. So now we see the final version here where we've got the value at time zero 
represented by the present value of the dividend at time one, time two, time three, and so on, and we've pushed that selling price out to some arbitrary time, time t. If we do this forever, because of course theoretically a stock is infinitely lived, then we end up with an infinite sum of these dividends. You see that in the final term here on this page. V0 is just the infinite sum of all the dividends to be received. So the fair value of a stock is simply the present value of all future dividends. If we know what dividends the stock will pay, we know what the intrinsic value of the firm is. Now, how do we simplify this further? Because, of course, that infinite sum has an infinite number of terms in it. And here what we do is we make some simplifying assumptions about what those dividends will be. The most simple assumption that we can make is that all dividends are the same. D1 equals D2 equals some constant dividend D. Now when we substitute that into that infinite sum, we recognize that this is just a perpetuity that pays D dollars per year. And the present value of a perpetuity formula is actually very simple. It's just that cash flow D divided by the discount rate K. A couple of things to note here before we move on. The higher the dividend, the more valuable the stock. D in the numerator shows that if D goes up, the value of the stock goes up. A stock that pays a higher dividend should be more valuable than a stock that pays a lower dividend, holding everything else constant. Now in the denominator, we see K, the discount rate. The higher the discount rate, the less valuable the stock is. This also makes sense, especially if we think about K, the discount rate, as representing some kind of risk premium for the stock. Then as that premium goes up, K goes up, and the value of the stock goes down. Again, holding the dividends constant, a stock that has higher risk or a higher risk premium should be less valuable than another stock. Before moving on, let's do a quick numerical example of this. Suppose we have a stock that pays a constant dividend of $2 per share every year, and that we require a discount rate of 11% on this stock. The calculation of the value is very simple by applying that perpetuity formula. The value is just $2 divided by the 11% discount rate, or $18.18. .18. 